I've been slingshot hunting today with the HFX slingshot and I'm using Theravan blue with some 14mm lead balls so it's generally a good combination for me. I'm very accurate with it and uh, it's a comfortable draw weight. Um, but yeah, I've uh, had, had quite a bit of luck actually today. I've seen a lot going on which is always good. Um, even if you don't get anything, you know, seeing a lot and learning about what you're doing is always a positive experience. Even if you're unsuccessful, you can learn a lot from that. But hunting in autumn and winter is quite good because a lot of the foliage drops off the trees. And uh, although there's plenty of ivy to provide cover for the squirrels, um, you know, if you sit around for long enough in areas of activity or where you know there are activity, uh, you know, areas where they may be feeding, you can, um, you can almost disappear and things start to present themselves. And I was setting up my camera to do just that and an opportunity presented itself right above me. And although I missed on the first few shots, I did eventually get it very fortunately. And it was a clean kill straight, uh, you know, straight in the head, a young male, and it dropped down. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good clean hit. You know, it's always nice to kill something outright than to see it wounded, which is never the intention. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get this young male prepared and uh, get him ready for the pot later. Just going to take the liver out, just to have a look, really, just really to get an idea of the animal's health, because obviously liver's quite, quite tasty. So it looks like a very healthy liver. Nice. Got the kidneys in there as well. Obviously keep those as well. Can definitely smell that this is a male. Just break through the diaphragm. And uh, get the lungs.
So, um, left the heart, got the liver, got the kidneys in. So, you know, decent bit of meat really off of this uh, young male. Just clean him up a bit. Got a bit of fat on there as well. So, yeah, there we go, not too bad. Make a good stew. Give them a wash when I get home, and that'll be fine. Sphagnum moss is quite nice for cleaning yourself up with and your tools. It's quite abrasive and uh, it does help clean things up a bit. This is probably not the best method of dressing a, a squirrel if you want to keep the pelt. Um, I mean, it, generally you lose the back end and it doesn't come off in one piece. So there is a, you know, a slightly more sort of conventional way of dressing it just to, uh, you know, preserve the pelt there if you want to keep it. But I've got enough of these at home, really, a couple of rabbits, so I don't really need any more. So I'll leave that just there. But another good thing you can do is carry around a, a little metal tin with you. And when you do go hunting, if you do, and you get an animal with a bit of fat on, you can put the fat in this tin and build up like a, a supply of fat to cook with, preserve your tools with. And a little metal tin can go on the fire and obviously then you can just uh, you know, melt the fat down and, uh, and store it away in there and it will keep quite well. This is also another, another little thing good for maintaining your, your knives and various other metal work and also good for leather work as well. While I'm out here and um, I'm out hunting, um, or I've finished sort of hunting for the day anyway, unless something really presents itself and it's a good opportunity. Um, I've been asked a number of questions on why I hunt, you know, why, why I hunt and what are my reasons behind it, what got me into hunting. Um, and it's a subject I hold quite close to my chest and it's, it, I find it a very grounding experience, you know, even going out and just hunting small game. You know, I, I never discredit the animal just based on its size, you know. Even if I, I was I was after mice, you know, I'd still treat them with the as much respect as I would any any animal. Um and people find that odd, you know, some people who don't hunt, you know. You say you respect the animal but yet you kill it. Well yeah, you know, it's uh, I eat meat and um, you know I think you know you should have respect for the animals you hunt and you should learn about them and, and understand them. You know, I probably understand more about lot of animals than, than people do who, who don't hunt them simply because I hunt them. I, I, I learn about them and I watch them and I see what they do and I see it when they're playing with each other and, and you know and they're feeding and digging and you know, running about and making noises and, and you get to you get to learn about them and respect them and I think that's a massive part of hunting a massive part of bushcraft observation and understanding and listening you know, it really is a huge part of it um, but for me, I, I, I do enjoy hunting. Um, I get a huge sense of satisfaction out of hunting something, preparing it and cooking it. You have to excuse my voice, it's very cold, so yeah, obviously the air is pretty chilly that I'm breathing. Um, yeah, I get a huge satisfaction out of, out of preparing it and eating it. You know, we got a pheasant the other day, and my girlfriend Megan you know, prepared a, an amazing meal for us. And we sat down, you know, and we had this meal. And we only really eat meat about once a week. Um, she used to be a huge meat eater before she met me. I thought I'd have a hard time converting her to not eating meat so much when I sort of proposed the idea to her. She was like, no, 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 meat's my staple diet. I eat it every day. And I was like, well, let's try it. You know, let's eat meat once a week. Let's, you know, let, you know, and I got her into, you know, she, she's really into growing her own vegetables. Um, so she, so she, she was sort of satisfied with doing that and I was, out kind of doing the hunting thing 
and we were putting the two together and seeing what meals we could we could make and um you know we made some great meals and we sort of eat just vegetarian meals you know um you know throughout the week and then one one day a week we would have meat and if there were leftovers we would have it the next day as well or later in the week um so yeah you know that's really for me you know been the way we've been living for quite some time now and usually what we eat each week is something that I've gone out and hunted whether it's with a gun or whether it's with a slingshot it doesn't really matter um, or uh, you know um, I've gone up the farm up the road and, and he sells organic produce you know he he rears and, and kills everything himself and prepares it on site and I'm happy to go and buy from him and pay a little bit more and when you're only eating meat once a week I'm getting a bit chilly Grab my jacket. Oh, I've got a recliner here. Um, when you're eating meat, you know, once a week, the cost really goes down and you can afford better produce if you can't hunt. Um, just by eating it, you know, once a week, you can afford to eat better. Um, you can afford to, to buy better food, really. The word organic is just a sort of marketing ploy, but it does constitute a few things, like they don't eat GMO feed, which is something that, that I'm quite happy about. Um, I mean, I'm no scientist and I don't know a great deal about the, the science behind GMOs. Um, but, you know, I know that there's been quite a few sort of trials and, and you know, that nothing's really proven and a lot of things are fast-tracked, um, you know, through um, the processing to get them out, um, you know, on the shelf and things. And, uh, you know, because it's all really about making money you know there's no company there's very few, very few companies out there who are um you know sort of working at a loss for the better of humanity um you, you know you don't really see that these days so you know for me you can probably get the impression that you know hunting's about knowing where my food comes from and having a sort of grounding experience out here and learning about the environment and, and about the you know the creatures that inhabit it and you know connecting with nature in, in whatever sort of way I can um, and yeah I just think things have gone, have gone a bit crazy with, with the human race and squirrels everywhere um, you know I appreciate there's a massive demand for meat and as a result it needs to be produced quickly and cheaply um, you know in order to in order to um you know to get it out there and, and for people to eat it so you know you've halved the growth time of chickens and you know various things are, are done to to make everything quick and cheap and affordable and accessible for everyone and yeah for me um why I hunt I appreciate hunting's not sustainable if everybody in the UK or the world started hunting there'd be nothing left you know it'd be wiped out um so I appreciate it's not something everyone can do, but I think for those of you out there who want to do it and can do it, have patience, you know, if, if all you can use is a slingshot, then make it work for you. You know, imagine that's all you have and that's your only lifeline and, and you will make it work for you. Um, you know, I've, I've made it work for me, you know, it's not always successful, but when it is, it's, it's better than an entire year of hunting with a gun, you know, for me. Um, it really is quite a, an amazing thing to be able to be able to come out and do um, so yeah you know if you, if you do want to hunt and, and you can hunt then um, I, I'd do it you know and and definitely I definitely recommend it and prepare prepare the meal if you feel a bit sick about gutting stuff then what the, a good thing to do is to is once you've prepared it um, put it you know clean it wash it put it in the freezer you know dry it put it in the freezer and um and then eat it maybe a couple of days later um, and then that image of, of the guts and things and the smell and everything won't be so relevant in your mind and it'll be much easier to eat and it'll be much more palatable and you'll probably really enjoy it um but uh, i'm i'm starting to freeze up with from lack of moving you probably see in my voice i'm sort of juddering and stuff i don't have too much meat on me probably need to eat more meat <laughs> but um yeah, I'm going to get home and, and clean the squirrel up. And, and just another point, the squirrel in the bag there, um, 
you know, I could be out for a few days and, and still eat that and I'd be fine with it. You know, there's no rush to get that back when you're in cold weather. So, you know, don't worry about it. This is far fresher than anything you'll ever see on the shelf and, and that's been there for a while, just chilling there. So, you know, this will be good to go for a long time. You know, no rush at all. So um, just give it a clean, cook it well. And um, yeah, appreciate you watching guys. And uh, you know, in the future I'll do some camp cooking when, I, when I'm when i able to. But my girlfriend really wants to, to eat that squirrel. She said if I do get one today, that we could make a sort of a winter sort of stew with it. And we've got a bit of pigeon breast and stuff to chuck in there as well. So um, I can't cook it out in the field, I'm afraid. But thank you for watching and um, yeah, thank you very much and, and just ask me any questions you want to and I'll, I'll be as helpful as I can be. Thanks again.